Hi, I'm Benton Stokes. And I'm Elaine O'Rourke. And this is Cocktail Theology. Hello. You know what? Our first umpteen seasons, you did not start out that way. No? How did I start out? No, that was a very um, ZJ way to start out. It was. It felt like our friend, <laughs> we have a friend, Jeremy, who we refer to as Zen Jeremy or ZJ on occasion. And he does, he would say, hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, so apparently you're channeling ZJ right now. I'm feeling pretty Zen today. You yeah. are feeling pretty Zen. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm great because I get to talk with our people and with you. Yeah, this is fun. Mm-hmm. We always enjoy doing this. We do. And we do. and I am one drink in, which has not happened for a while in the recording of this. It's true. So it's true because there we, we are. started enjoying cocktails before recording today. We did. We did because we're actually recording on a late afternoon on a springish day that's kind of leaning more towards summer rather than leaning Starting towards to, winter. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely here in San Jose, California, where we are. Mm-hmm. And we're been... enjoying a cocktail from our cocktail book. Yes, although it's been modified. We modified then... it today. We, yes. we did, but I think we improved on it. I, I think so, too. And I think that in the next version of the cocktail book, we definitely change it. Change it, To be yeah, more like this. We need this. to notate what we did. Yep. So what we're enjoying today is Jairus's daughter. <laughs> and Elaine named this cocktail, <laughs> so I'm going to let her describe why and what and what the cocktail is. Well, for reasons that aren't even worth going into here, uh, I was looking for a variation on the classic cocktail, the zombie. Mm-hmm. And this is a wildly divergent variation. However, I was looking for, like, what biblical thing? <laughs> <laughs> could be like zombie and Jairus's daughter was raised from the dead (laughs) by Jesus and so I thought that's what we have to name this Jairus's daughter Jairus's daughter (gasps) it is a little bit different than our typical Mm -hmm. sort of go to cocktail it's really good so it's uh heavy on the gin it's bombay sapphire east which Mm -hmm. is a more botanical version of the sapphire peppery it's got pepper and lemon yeah it's got some it's got some spice to it Mm -hmm. uh it has aperol which is one of our favorite um Mm -hmm. liqueurs amaro what what is aperol it's an amaro it's an amaro yeah and then it has ground peppercorns Mm -hmm. and it has the zest of a clementine Oh, my darling. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I can't say the zest of a clementine without thinking that it's like a witch's brew. Like it's, I don't know, I have new. <sighs> double, double, toil and trouble, mm-hmm. fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Um, so we put it in a cocktail glass. Um, Benton has a coupe and I have a more st- like a triangular type. Um, but what we did was this time was we rimmed it with a combination of one of the salts we brought back from Hawaii, mm. which is... Uh, salt, uh, lilikoi, which is uh, passion fruit, and some Hawaiian chilies. And that and sugar is the rim. Yeah, it's So really it just good. accents everything. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it too. So that's what we're drinking right now. That's what we're drinking. And today what we are talking about is prayer. Uh, and prayer is one of those subjects that we could spend many episodes talking about. And we might. Today we're more specifically posing the question, why pray? Why is prayer an important part of a spiritual person's life? And it is. And it is. And uh, so why? Why is that? I think one of the things that I've been coming around to in my, in my own uh, relationship with God over the last year or so regarding prayer is that I... I kind of view prayer as an act of trust, an act of my own trust in God. When I bring God something that's on my mind, or if I'm praying on behalf of someone else, what I'm really doing is I'm handing that that need or that desire or that dream or that hope to God, and I'm trusting it with God. Um, my role in that besides handing it over to God, is also allowing God to keep it Mm -hmm. and not immediately pulling it back and saying, wait, wait, I made a terrible mistake. (laughs) I need to handle this right now. I need to handle this right now. 
And the thing is, when, when we do that, sometimes God does give us a role in this, of course. Yes. So we may pray for, you know, I remember when I was in, in kind of dire financial straits, I, I prayed that God would provide a way out. And God did provide a way out, but it required me being obedient to that and being disciplined about that and taking the steps to do it. Um, God really gave me some courage I think, and some insight into my own situation. Uh, God did not, you know, grab me by the collar and pull me out of debt. God instead gave me the courage and pointed me to the means to make some changes in my life. Um, and, and it took a lot of work, and a lot of patience, and a lot of diligence, but I got there. And so God answered my prayer, but I was an active participant in the answer of my own prayer. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I was thinking as you were talking about that, that that the other thing that God put into your path for you to choose to participate in or not was people. Yes. People who could help you. Yes. Whether it's friends who could support you um, emotionally or financially, whether it was people who could guide you on, you know, all those right. things. And you chose at that point to take advantage of what God had put in front of you, having once prayed it. Right. And of that's course. such an... But it's... but. Of the of course that you just said is not an of course that a lot of people feel. Well, and I wasn't feeling it then. No, of course you weren't. <laughs> yeah, I, wasn't, I definitely wasn't feeling it then. And right. the thing is, is that some of those resources were there the whole time. Of course. But it wasn't until I went to God. Yes. And I said, God, help me here, that I, I started to become aware. Right. Of, of the people and the resources that were available to me. Exactly. And, and my own ability to change course in yeah. my own life and my spending and my debt and all that kind of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And so it, in a sense, I was an active participant in, in the answering of that prayer. Yes. And sometimes we are. Yes. But the point is, while I could have done all of that without asking for God's help, right. I wasn't doing that without God's help. Right. I wasn't even aware of everything that I could have been doing to fix my situation until I gave that situation to God. Yes. And so I think that trusting God with my debt and my financial need opened the door for me to start to see my own situation through a different lens yes and to see ways that i could actually uh, find a way out right yeah yeah soren kierkegaard who was a christian existentialist and they call him the father of existentialism talked about prayer in a number of different ways and he was a prayer but one of the ways he talked about prayer was that prayer is not intended to change god is intended to change the prayer That's and right. i th i think he's overstating like if you take that all by itself as if he didn't say anything else it's an overstatement mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but there's no question that if we are praying we see the world differently we look for different things if we actually are praying faithfully and what i mean by that is with a faith lens right, right. so i think plenty of people who would describe themselves as faithful don't pray faithfully mm. So there's either this sense of, I'm going to hand this to you, God, and I'm going to back off, and now I'm on my way, and if something doesn't mm -hmm. happen, it's all on you, mm -hmm. right? And, and here we're talking about petitionary or intercessory prayer, right? Praying on in behalf of ourselves or behalf of others rather than a different kind of prayer, because there's yes. all different kinds of prayer. So we can pray faith fully in a way that is really challenging ourselves to engage in having trust. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of ways to do that. But what it does do, aside from what you were just saying about the resources already being there and God helping you see them, mm -hmm. is it changed you in whatever way, whether mm -hmm. it was humility or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. to be able to see them. Yes. Right? You know, there's that old story about the person where the floods are rising and the person gets up on the on the roof and, you know, somebody in a rowboat comes by and says, here, come, we'll rescue you. And the person says, no, I'm praying to God. God will rescue me. You know, and we go on a <laughs> helicopter and so forth. The guy drowns um, because, you know, he gets up to heaven and says, God, why didn't you rescue me? And it's like, I sent you a freaking boat. I sent you a, you know, all those kinds of things. Right. Um, so there is that sense of, faith that has to do with trust and then acknowledging or or being open to seeing when that's happening yeah 
right? Mm -hmm. We've talked before about the power of the Holy Spirit to point things out to us. Prayer, I think, when when we're praying in a particular way, opens us up to the Holy Spirit being able to go, psst, hey, mm-hmm. Benton, hey, Elaine, look at this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is huge. It is Which huge. is huge. So another reason I would say why pray is, well, I have many, but one of them is that sometimes prayer feels crappy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's really, really hard. I have gone through very long, dry seasons in prayer. I did not grow up praying in that conversational way or in the petitionary way. I grew up with prayer being formalized. Mm. Now, I'm a big believer in formalized (laughs) prayer now that I understand its actual use, Mm -hmm. right? right? But I haven't grown up with that sense of leaning on the Lord the way Mm -hmm. that language goes. Yeah. So I've gone through some very, very dry periods. And so I want to say for everybody who's listening, Mm -hmm. sometimes prayer is really freaking hard. It is. Mm -hmm. And just getting yourself to do it regardless of how it comes out. You know, it's like calling up a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time and you're kind of embarrassed to do it or you have no idea what to say. That said, another good reason to pray besides the fact that God does act in our lives and besides the fact that it changes us and makes us more open to things, is that thing we've been talking about, the physics of prayer. The reality is, is, and literally, the reality is that Mm -hmm. we know now that everything is, in fact, interconnected. And so when we pray, particularly if we pray out loud, only not because out loud is magic, but because it engages more of this, Mm -hmm. particularly when we pray out loud, we are, in fact, affecting the universe, because we are affecting the little tiny bits of pieces around us, which affect the little tiny bits of pieces around them, which affect, and so forth. So even if you don't believe that God reaches in and does things, which I do, the fact that we are connecting with something bigger than we are is mysterious and miraculous. It is. So that's another good reason to pray. So I want to step away from intercessory and petitionary prayer for a minute. Sure. And step into a couple of different kinds of prayer. Great. So I alluded earlier, I didn't allude, I actually directly addressed (laughs) earlier um, more formal prayer. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, um, I had a lot of Catholic friends and actually some Orthodox friends who used prayers over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. So the rosary is the classic, right? Sure. And... My non-Catholic friends would make fun of the rosary. There are a couple of things about the rosary that are really important or any other of those ritual prayers. One is the fact that it changes us. But the other is that as we learn to pray something unceasingly, mm-hmm. everybody who knows any Bible, that should like mm-hmm. ring some bells. As we learn to pray something unceasingly, it, it becomes part of us. And then, frankly, we can be praying in two ways, praying that and praying otherwise at the same time. So if, thinking about the Our Father, right, Our Father who art in heaven, that kind of thing, if you know it really, really well, you can do a couple of different things. One is you can really focus on what that's saying. I mean, Mm -hmm. you could spend your entire life just on that first word. Yeah. But you can also pray it and still have other prayers going on at the same time. It is Amazing. So the ritualized prayer does some of that. It also allows us to pray when we don't have words, Mm -hmm. which can be extremely important. The other kind of prayer that I think is critical is the prayer where we don't say anything Mm -hmm. and we let God speak or we start to speak and then we allow room one of the things i think people get wrong about prayer if i may Mm -hmm. is that they don't listen back right it's talk 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 okay i'm done the listening for god's voice and the learning what god is like is so important it's you know learning to understand and recognize god's voice right 
we're not unlike dogs. (laughs) (laughs) And that once we learn to recognize a voice, we know whose it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I have talked enough that I could probably recognize your voice from others anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Right? When we pray a lot and listen for God's way of speaking to us, we learn to recognize God's voice like a friend. That is another great reason to participate in prayer. Because so often, particularly if we've been raised in a more um, reactive church, Mm -hmm. our sense is, is this God? Is this God? I'm being told to do the, is this God? Well, first of all, God is never, never freaked out. Right. God's good to go. Mm -hmm. And so you start to learn what God's voice sounds like and to distinguish between your voice or the voice of all those ancient people or, you know, the stuff that we've absorbed and God's voice. Right. For me, God often speaks with a slight sense of humor. Mm. And I believe that's because God knows me and knows I respond that way. Yeah. Right? But that's another good why of prayer is learning to discern God's voice. Yeah, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. And really, if one wants to have a relationship with God or with anyone, you're not going to build it if you never have conversation. If you never spend time, you're never going to build that relationship. And it's, it's like you can say that you are a faithful person, as you alluded to earlier. But if you aren't investing in that relationship, are you a faithful person? Right. I mean, because God wants to be in relationship with us. Yes. So it is imperative on us to reciprocate. It's right. imperative upon us to spend that time right. getting to know God in all the ways that God makes God's self available and known. Yes. Uh, and there are many. Yes. But prayer is one of those really important ones. Right. Because we do learn to hear God's voice when we listen back. We learn to trust God when we pray. Yes. We learn to be comfortable in God's presence yes. when we pray and when we do that a lot. We don't, we're not afraid mm-hmm. to be in front of God talking to God because God becomes a friend. God becomes someone we trust. God becomes someone we're comfortable with. God doesn't become our last line of defense. God becomes the first person that we go to. Mm when we have something bothering us or when we need to get something off our chest. Yes. So I think prayer is just so important and we can't do nearly enough about prayer in a 22 minute episode, but we would love to hear from you. What are some questions you have about prayer? I know prayer is one of those things that's very confusing to people. Mm. And you mentioned ancient voices. And I think a lot of us grew up with really kind of warped and weird ideas about what prayer is and why we pray yes. um, and what's supposed to be the result of prayer. And uh, so if you have questions about prayer, why we pray, how to pray, all of those things, we would love to hear those questions. You can always email us at Benton, B-E-N-T-O-N, or Elaine, E-L-A-N-E, at schoolforseekers.com. Also, if you have other questions or other issues you would like us to discuss on cocktail theology, reach out, because we want to hear from you. Absolutely. I'm going to have some more of this Jairus' daughter. Are you, or are you going to move on to something else? Well, I'm going to... Well, now that she's resurrected. (laughs) Now that she's resurrected. Now that she's no longer a zombie. (laughs) I know. Yeah, she's been sitting there a while. I don't know. She may be a zombie again. Yeah, I think think that one's dead. (laughs) I think that one's just long gone. (laughs) Time to move on, my friend. (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.